You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and I'm joined today by Ricky Baez to talk about an HR topic that uh, he may have some interesting thoughts on. But before we get there, Ricky, how are you today? I am doing great, Pete. Beautiful, beautiful Friday. Beautiful Friday today. It is a beautiful Friday. Elon Musk walks into Twitter headquarters as a new owner, fires everyone, and here we are. So I don't know why I'm bringing that up other than it, it's been all over Twitter. What What do you think? Um, if people were shocked, I don't know where you've been living for the past 20 years, because normally that's what happens in a huge, huge acquisition like that. So I expected it. I think I think this is a little personal, though, don't you? I mean, I, I, I don't you know this. This happened fast. Oh, it did. It did. It, you know what? It could be personal because we saw it was t three top executives, right. right, who were really involved in censorship. And uh, here he comes and says, you, 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 goodbye. That's, I mean, that's exactly how he talks, at least so. what we see in the media. <laughs> that's right. He probably did it exactly like that. <laughs> exactly like that. Goodbye. That's it. Done. Well, it's, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I don't know. Are you a big Twitter user? You know what? I I want to be. It's just not as engaging as Instagram. I like Instagram better than Twitter. Um, now, it's uh, Twitter. I can watch Instagram with my son next to me. Sometimes <laughs> Twitter, some things come up that you're like, oh, OK, no, I don't want to I don't want to deal with that. Not 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 on Twitter. So I'm I would love to be a Twitter fan. I just it's just it, it, Instagram is a better platform for me. Interesting. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the polar opposite. I, the opposite, really? Yeah. I'm, Twitter better than than Instagram? Yes, for sure. Okay. I don't really, I don't really look at Instagram. I don't really uh, I don't spend any time on there. I look at I read on, and learn a lot on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, yeah, it's a great source of information. I think it all, it all comes down to who you follow as well. And uh, that would be an interesting thing for us to talk about in the future is yeah. the social media accounts you can really learn from. And, and I do try to, to take advantage of that. And, it, and that's everywhere from Twitter to, um, to YouTube is amazing for learning now. And, uh, I wish I, I say now I discovered it recently, but it's, it's amazing. And even TikTok, I think, is becoming oh my a God. channel to learn from, right? <laughs> Which is odd because it's not just dancing nurses, it turns out. <laughs> no, TikTok has almost replaced my need for entertainment from all the other streaming devices. Like uh, Netflix, psh, if you want to be entertained and not sleep, open up TikTok at 11 p.m. in bed. <laughs> and it never ends, right? It's it never like, ends. It's just, I'm laughing, giving. I'm laughing. And then we got a meeting like this today. And next thing you know, I'm like, oh. Um, I'm TikTok hungover. All right. Man. <laughs> so today we're putting your HR hat on to the, right. I guess you never take it off. Nah, uh, it's, it's, it's the hair. It's the HR hair. Always the HR been hair. We're, <laughs> we're, we're talking about a blog that mm -hmm. is on the four corner website that I put up there sometime in the last week, comparing HR to people operations. Yes. And mm -hmm. Your first reaction, I believe, was it's one in the same. What are you doing? Why, why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you making stuff up? Right? Yeah. Well, well, look, it's um, I've I, I I've been in HR for twenty years, and when I got into human resources, it was in the transition from it being called personnel to actual human resources because some of the people I work with they call me personnel, and I'm like, all right, it just sounded so, you know like an authority figure. I didn't know that. But to me, it was really, really tactical. And we move into human resources. Even then, Pete, I saw how human resources was being treated. It was more, still more tactical, but it had the human element to it. And when I started seeing how it was more tactical, it was more paper driven. I, I made a decision 20 years ago. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to really honor what the H in HR stands for. And that's, that's the human aspect. Right. Because, you know, it, it's a, normally HR is seen as the entity that tells the business no. <laughs> right. No, you can't do that or we'll get sued. You can't do that or this is going to happen. So it's normally they, they tell staffing companies no pretty regularly, too. Pretty, yeah, well, well, yeah. yeah, we've had conversations. Right. It, we, we've had really interesting conversations that you're like, really? Really, Ricky, that that that's an HR thing. And we're like, yeah, yeah, it is. And I love those conversations. Whereas that human element, instead of me saying, hey, Pete, read this handbook or law, 
I like the relationship building aspect to where from one human being to another, I want to understand how you want to succeed as a business owner. And I would love to help you understand, not you in, you know, in particular, people. I would love to, I like, I like to help people understand how we can make that happen the right way from a legal and HR and people perspective. So the article is called People Offer Operations versus HR, the key differences. So when I read this, I'm like, to me, it's one and the same. And I've been doing that since the beginning. And I read it and I was so happy to see that finally there's a distinction to the people operation aspect of HR. Well, HR perhaps was in need of a facelift. And what I mean by that is I think of my own experience in history with HR first as an employee who, mm -hmm. who needs to get past a gatekeeper to determine whether my application resume was worthy of moving on. So that's not I guess if it goes well, you're, you know, you, you think fondly of HR in that, in that interaction. But once you are an employee, hearing from HR historically was a, a bad thing. You did not want, it's like getting sent to the principal's office, right? And, and I don't have fond memories of any HR interaction See? Um, <laughs> as an employee, it, it, yeah. it, it, you know, working for two large companies, either um, if I, I don't, I can't, I don't think this happened, but it, it, the fear was there. If HR came knocking to me as an employee, that, that meant something was wrong. And, yeah. or as a manager, when I had to uh, engage HR, it was because something was wrong yep. and, and I needed the, their help. So for, in that case, HR was a resource, but again, it was surrounding a bad situation, you know, with an employee or whatever, but nothing particularly comes to mind. Probably nothing I can say anyway. <laughs> um, but then as a, um, you know, now as a business owner, to your point, when I have over the past 18 years thought of HR, it's because I have a problem that needs to be solved. Mm. And that has historically been the way it goes. And I don't think my experience is unique in that regard, but over the past, I don't know how many years, I think Google, you know, be like Google, right? That's, that's what everyone's wanted to do for the past eight years. And it was someone at Google who coined the phrase, I believe, and that's that's you know, as far as I could tell uh, when when writing the article that um, uh, of people operations. That's that's where it originates, and so that makes sense because Google was about like, let's let's be more um, let's let's change the mm. way you know, we treat employees. Let's change the way employees get to spend their time here, and so I think that is a pretty big facelift and a change to who HR has historically been, or I should say how HR has historically been perceived. And so I agree with a hundred percent Pete, because I've noticed that very early on where HR was very reactive, right? And think about it. I, I see, and, and let me be careful in how I say this, because I saw what happened to Tom Brady when he compared him uh, playing in the NFL to being deployed in the military. I know those are two different things. So what I'm about to compare right now is like the police department. I guarantee that police officers, 95% of their encounters with the public is negative. It's negative, right? And I saw the same in human resources. Think about it. The only time there's a positive, proactive encounter between a candidate and or employee in human resources is when they're about to come on board, when they're being onboarded, um, and that's it. Right. <laughs> right? right. Or if they're voluntarily leaving. Everything else has been reactive. And I started to really learn that fact when I worked for the county uh, years and years ago with my really first experience with unions. Let me tell you, I have a lot of experience in unions and 95% of it is negative. It really was. And I wanted to change that. So um, when I started working for uh, a Sears Home Improvement, we had a call center of about 1,200 people. And what I wanted to do, Pete, I wanted to change that, that, that negative aspect of human resources. I hated walking into a room and being looked at as the Green Reaper. I really hated that. And this is something that I, I got a lot when I worked at Darden. My job at Darden Restaurants was an employee relations manager. I don't know if I would say, I share this with you. I used to fly all over, all over the, the, the U.S. and have conversations with people, do investigations, right? Just mean to make sure the organization doesn't get in trouble. It's a great company to work for. Yeah, for anyone I, not familiar with Darden, they 
to have a thousand, you know, well over a thousand restaurants, uh, multiple brands you know, yep. that you'd recognize. So very large employer awesome with food. lots of locations. Yes, yes, absolutely. Trust me, I know because I took advantage of that discount. Let me tell you. <laughs> but I was flying everywhere, and you know, my team. I mean, I didn't lead the team, but the team I belong to gained the reputation that as soon as we got there, boom, there's a green reaper. Somebody's getting fired. I hated that feeling. I hated that feeling. And I wanted to go in there and just really get to know the folks. So what I asked my boss, I'm like, hey, can I get some money in my budget to fly places? This is before Zoom was as, as prevalent as, as, as it is right now. I wanted to fly places, just walk in, talk to the folks. Let me tell you, I quickly learned how to make Shedder Bay biscuits when uh, Red Lobster belonged to, uh, to uh, Darden. And let me tell you, uh, I I did some good work in building relations because all I did was go in and talk to the folks, see how they're doing, to learn how to bake cheddar bay biscuits, and I gained thirty pounds in the process. Because of course I got to taste them, Pete. I mean, come on. <laughs> but you know, the reason I like this article is because it really focused on the human aspect piece, that people operation. But in this article, it says that it's it's a part of human resources, and I want to challenge that. People operation should be human resources, period. It should be, period. That's why I love how this article put what is that difference because, and I want to make it just a little bit, just add a little bit more and put that the people operations piece should be a part of every aspect of HR. Well, you know, HR is a is a pretty broad uh, term mm -hmm. or, or at a big company, the responsibilities of an HR department are very broad. You and I, recently talked about the different roles that make up an HR department. Yep. We differed a little bit, I think on, on recruiting in particular, that yeah. is an, you have know, generally an HR function. So maybe shouldn't be right. Maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe uh, we talked about payroll, right? That's payroll right. is, is a, by, if you look at what payroll is, it's a financial function, sometimes HR. So it, it's HR becomes a, almost a bit of a generic uh, term because yeah. of that. And so I think people operations refines an aspect of HR to give, you know, to, that you now know what it means, right? Yeah. And that's the point of this article where you, you say, okay, I, I understand the distinction there that we're talking about the strategic aspect of it. That's not as, as you said, tactical, right? And that, that I think often that has a negative implication to it. <laughs> Um, but that's the work has to be done, yeah. right? The, de the details matter. The payroll has to be processed. The, right. you know, the, the, you know, the terminations have to go through when <laughs> one time yeah. the, uh, you know, the, the onboarding paperwork has to be filled out completely. So those aren't, I would say those are critical, critical functions. The people operations aspect of it is not, um, mandatory. So, so, so hear me out on this. Okay. Um, I have to process payroll. I have mm -hmm. to fill out the, the, you know, the, 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 the onboarding paperwork. I have to you know, make sure benefits are in place. I don't have to make sure my, my employees well being is sought after. I don't have to, to check on them to make sure they're happy. I don't have to think of, of things like career planning and, 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 and you know, uh, what can we do uh, to improve retention, I should do all of those things, but I don't have to. So to me, people operations is an opportunity for an organization to cover the things and, and take care of the things that they should do, but they, but they aren't obligated to do. So is that a, is that a fair way to, uh, to approach it? Okay. I'm pausing because the way I'm looking at it, Pete, I see. So let me use that same example, the same example, example with payroll payroll. It has to be done. It's paper esque. Right. But I see payroll as an amazing opportunity to connect with the people, because I tell my team all the time, um, every every issue that comes into HR department, um, it's on a first come, first serve basis, except two things. Anything that happened that's illegal that we have to address and payroll. Right. Never 
ever make people wait for the reason they're coming to work, which is money, right? So to me, the payroll department has a great opportunity to connect with the folks in case something bad happens, right? In case like a zero was added or taken away, because people notice those things. Instead of waiting for the person to 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 get that payroll, um, that check, and it's short or they have too much, you reach out to them as soon as it happens, right? That way they can plan ahead. To me, that's part of the people aspect. Or if their paycheck is short or their benefits didn't happen, I don't care if you as an HR specialist are about to go to lunch, about to hit overtime, take care of them. I'll pay you for it, obviously take care of them, do not make them wait. To me, that is the people operation aspect that we, as long as we as HR folks and business leaders, as long as we take care of exactly what they they value, they're going to do the same for the organization. So to me, to be honest, Pete, they're one and the same. All right. All right. All right you're not there yet. So let me, let me counter that <laughs> okay, and you say you could make that same case for every department of an organization. That doesn't mean it's they're in charge of people operations. So customer service should go above and beyond where possible. Sales True. should go be, above and beyond where possible. The you know the the greeter at the front door, or the receptionist should 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 you know do more than just make sure they the person right. has a badge and and signs the the guest book or whatever it might be. So I, I think you could make a case that every employee of an organization should have responsibility for people operations to the degree that they can, right? Or every manager, every department. But this is, this to me is different. This is saying, it's not just those things that we should assume or, or take for granted. We're, we're going to make sure it gets the right level of attention and thought mm -hmm. that, that, that our, that our employees deserve. And it's meaningful to me because, you know, personally, because for years, I, I didn't give those things much thought as, as, as an organization. And, and, you know, of course we wanted to take care of our uh, employer um, uh, clients and candidates and employees the best we could, but j again, just through normal course of business. Mm -hmm. And now we have meetings about what can we do to enhance the employee's experience here? What can we do to improve retention? What can we do? Yeah to attract, you know, new employees who want to be part, you know, to be part of our organization. And those things, you, it's, if you're going to make significant improvements, you have to put forth significant effort. You That's can't right. just say, well, it's natural that we're going to do these things. Of course, we're going to want um, our employees to be happy and we're, we're going to take good care of them. But if asked, well, what are you actually doing about it? That I think is uh, is where the rubber meets the road. And you say, well, we don't really have much of a specific answer to that. But if you say, well, we have a you know, um, uh, you know people operations focus in department or individual, whatever, depending on the size of the organization, and here's what their responsibilities are now, now it has more meaning. And now you're going to get more out of it. So um, so I think it's 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 not enough, perhaps, to just take it for granted. I'm with you. I'm with you there. I think I think we we're saying the same thing just differently, right? Because it, it it's this is why this article sparked a huge interest in me because I, it it's I was just happy for somebody to finally say fi finally somebody said it. Finally somebody addressed the H and HR because that's what this is, right? Finally somebody addressed that there is a people function that really needs to be it, it really needs to be brought to the forefront, like the other areas in HR. For example, compliance training, right? I it, it's I don't like the compliance name, right? Because it sounds like you're doing something like you don't want to do. And as soon as you treat it that way, then people are going to treat it that way. But if you connect with the employees in a way where they get excited for this training, how this training is going to help, you're going to get a better result from attendance and what we call in the training and development world, the transfer of knowledge. Right, because that's that's the key. The transfer of knowledge and that knowledge is being used. There's one thing in this article that I really liked, and I said it already, is that it when it talks about the people operations versus HR, what is the difference? There's the approach, the system, the legal function. But the part that I liked is the reactive versus proactive, which is what I started talking about earlier over with Darden. So when I worked at that twelve hundred uh, twelve hundred dollar listen to me twelve hundred uh, seat call center, I noticed that as well. I was over a team of four, and I noticed that we were a machine when it came to recruiting, and we would recruit people, and we would 
focus so much on helping people reach their career aspirations, their pay, everything. But once they went to training, we forgot about them, mm. right? Until something happened. Right. And that's why I'm like, we cannot forget about the employees. As soon as they go to training, we still need to treat them and connect with them with the same veracity as we did to bring them on board. So that's what changed the reactive versus proactive. So what I started telling my team is each and every one of you twice a week, not on the same day, go out and check on it. Spend 45 minutes walking the floor, talking to the people seeing how they're doing. Do they have anything? They're going to freak out at first because they're like, why is HR tapping me on, on the shoulder at 1030 in the morning on a Friday? Yep. Right? Pack your pack your stuff. Pack your stuff and go ahead and do the walk of shame. <laughs> so it took about a couple of weeks to a month to get over that stigma. But you notice something different. You started to see people interacting. You started to see people loving what they do and not being afraid to go to HR. To me, that's the part of the article that really got to me. I'm like, yes, finally, we're getting there. I mean, I don't know if that's what, that's what you were shooting for. Yeah, I think that's but, the point, right? Yeah. And you said it, reactive versus proactive. And, and what you describe is, I think, what uh, you know, every, it'd be nice if everyone did that. It'd be nice <laughs> if every... You know, employee, manager, a uh, person who's in in position to help said, "Hey, let's let's not do the bare minimum of our job because that's essentially what you just described. Let's follow up. Let's yeah. let's do more than we're required." Okay, that's that's awesome. That's rare. I yeah. think. I mean, yeah. I, I I guess I really don't know how rare that is. You know, when I hear when I when I see so much quiet quitting talk lately, <laughs> I, I think it's rare because. That, that whole premise is let's do only what's in our job description. And I suspect what you just described was not in your job description. No, you, you not. wanted to enhance the, the, the experience and to just do the best job you can, you can do. So that, that is, it'd be nice if that existed everywhere. What this is to me is a company acknowledging um, or the need to acknowledge that that may not be happening and let's let's put a focus on it again, whether it's a role, a department, an individual, or just a um, you know part of 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 what you uh, incorporate into you know quarterly conversations and planning, whatever it might be. That hey, are we taking care of this aspect of HR just like we take care of benefits and onboarding and and you know the the stuff that we have to do. Because that's to me the real difference, right? This is not a, this is not a must do. This is a should do. Yeah, you know, but you you need to do it. So so okay. So I don't know if you said it backwards. Or you meant it that way. You're saying that a must do, but you should do. It's not the same thing. No, and not at all. I must I must process payroll, right? But I yeah. should okay, make sure yeah. that the employees are are satisfied. Um, and that we're looking out for uh, for things beyond the just the you know showing up and going home in the day. So I don't know why I asked that because I know the I know I know the I know that difference. It's like the other day, weren't we talking the other day and about a about a PowerPoint and uh, and I I said you said hey I got I see some some slides that are not complete. I'm like no, it's hidden. And here's what hidden means. And I <laughs> I right. told you what it yes. means. And yes. you're like. Wait, stop. Did you just tell me the difference between the definition of hidden? I'm like, holy crap, I did. You did. You defined <laughs> hidden for me, which uh, was much appreciated. You're welcome. <laughs> what I do so I'm you. retracting with that with that question. You're right. It's not the same thing. But, you know, I think that from my perspective, since I've been doing this so long, to me, it's a must do. And that's, because and listen, that's how I see it. So there's a choice you have to you make as an employer. And and I have an appreciation for this. Uh, this is going off the rails a little bit, but when I you, you can take those things for granted that that employees are are going to do them, but unless you you know, like, but but you shouldn't, right? Like, don't assume someone's going to do that. Yeah. Don't assume that someone is going to go above and beyond. When they do, recognize those individuals, promote them, reward them, take care of them, no question about it. But I think it's an appreciation that I've had as, um, so I'll step back a little bit to say when I, when I decided to start my own business, it, it, it was partly because the organizations that I worked for were too bound by processes and procedures. Mm. And I was ambitious. I was 
someone who was constantly coming up with new things to ways to improve and grow. And it was almost always met by, you know, here's reasons why we can't do it. Or if we can, we can't do it quickly. And we have to go through, uh, you know, all of these steps or this is the way we've always done it. And that was Mm -hmm. extremely frustrating to me. It became increasingly frustrating as my career went on. And I finally got to the point where I said, well, it's time to put up or shut up and put my money where my mouth is. Let me go prove that the way that I want to do business is, you know, can work, can be effective. Mm. So as we started to grow, I realized that sometimes structure is needed. Sometimes yeah. processes are, are, uh, are there for a reason. And I've had to find that balance uh, and, and always think of maintaining that balance between let's be agile and flexible and mm-hmm. give our employees the ability to uh, to make their own decisions and to act quickly and that's been a strength of of our of our organization uh, since day one but let's also not take these things for granted as we get bigger as you know the the message gets diluted of you know like telephone game where what I think it is versus yep. the person who I said it to to the saying it to someone else to then now saying it to a new employee because you know now that we have uh our we have our employee numbers are in the 30s it's not a huge organization <laughs> far from mm-hmm. it but that still happens and so whoa we have to write things down we have to make sure we're do- we're documenting things so that's really a very long-winded way of 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 getting to the point that um if I knew what every employee was thinking and doing I, I wouldn't need to write it all down but mm-hmm. but a big organization if you take if you assume that your HR team is going to go above and beyond, like you described, you know, that's, that's probably not very safe and, and, and wise to do, you know, you should, you should make sure those things are being done. Again, very long winded way of getting to that point. Well, and especially now, this is why I like this article, how it's so timely these days, because, you know, Yes, we talked about quiet quitting, we talked about quiet firing, we talked about the great resignation. So now a lot of organizations are scratching their head is like, what well, we're even paying people more than what we did five years ago, and people are still quitting. So the reason the people operations piece of it is so crucial is because I, I'm here to tell you folks, I've seen this, that if yes, people respond to money. They do. And if somebody else dangles uh, $30,000 more a year over their head somewhere else, chances are they're going to jump ship. But, you know, depending on their on their financial situations. Right. The, so the fi- their personal financial situation aside, if they're about to leave an organization where we have leaders, we got peers, we got a co- company culture that really focuses on the person who's doing the job, not just the job, they're going to think about it twice. They really are. So even if they jump ship to that $30,000, even if that helps them, you know, that extra money in six, nine, 10 months, even a year, they're going to be miserable. And then their values are going to change and they're going to come back and say, you know what, this pay cut is worth what I'm getting at this other organization coming back here, you know, because they really cared about me as a human being. Of course, that's not the goal of the organization, especially for for a profit. You got to make a profit, right? So we can address people who don't perform a different way. But I'm telling you, this is crucial for companies to really understand these days if we're looking to curb the great resignation that's happening now. Yep. And that is, um, it's going to be a problem for the rest of our careers uh, as as there's going to be a talent shortage and, you know, call it a war for talent, uh, if you will. And so the companies that get it right, they're going to succeed. The ones that don't, yeah, good luck to you, right? So <laughs> I think we can conclude on that note. We beat this thing up enough. Um, I, I think we understand what it is. I think I have you on board, right? With Oh, uh, no, no, absolutely. I, it's, I was never off board, right? <laughs> I am on board. It's, I agree with this 100%. I'm just glad there's a spotlight on it. I just need one favor from you. I just need you to make me one promise, Pete. What's One that? promise. If for some bizarre reason in the in the near future, if Elon Musk decides to buy Four Corner Resources, you're going to make sure that he doesn't cancel my contract. Come on, dude. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, if Elon, if you're if you're ready, call me. We'll talk. But uh, I think he, I think he's I think he's probably focused on a few other things right now. So we'll uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to him later.
<laughs> All right, Ricky. If I see you in space next year, we're going to have a conversation. <laughs> Perfect. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Have a good, one. Have a good uh, rest of the day. Thanks for you listening. Too. All right.